this is current events and I'm wanting to uh, talk to you guys about something you know we all have um, certain situations that happen in our life uh, in our lives and they shape us they dictate to some extent um, how we'll react to things what we'll do what we won't do and all the above and, and more etc and I had a moment last week recently and um, it really brought me back down to zero uh, to a neutral zone I remember growing up my uh, my mother and father told me that I needed to always be aware of my surroundings and always be mindful of the things that I do, things that I say, my appearance, all of these things. Uh, as a child, you know, I thought they were just nitpicking a lot. That's how it felt as a child, as a kid, that your parents are always getting on you about something, not brushing your hair. Um, not saying the right thing, overreacting, being too emotional, not trying your hardest, going too hard. You know, it was a constant balancing act to make your parents proud, make your parents happy. And you're like, for what? I know a lot of you out there have, you know, been through that. But I remember my parents saying to me at a very young age, probably five or six, maybe seven, the, probably about five, the notion got beat into me uh, figuratively, not literally, although literally as well, <laughs> I guess both, I guess that would be appropriate, that I couldn't make mistakes that my mistakes would cost me dearly. Now, as a kid, I saw my peers. Uh, I grew up in the suburbs um, outside of Chicago. And I grew up around a whole diverse group of people, not just black folks, not just white folks. You know, Polish, which is, you know, we consider that as white, Italian, um, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Indian, um, Native American, everyone. And I noticed how my white friends would interact with their parents and interact in general and in, in society. They could do and say whatever they wanted. They talked back. I was astonished at that. Usually that would garner uh, an ass whooping, um, a reprimand immediately. They seemed like they didn't have much cares in the world. And I knew that at a very young age, that wasn't my experience. I knew that based on what my parents told me, I would have to be on my P's and Q's. I'd have to work three times harder than my white counterpart to get just as much as they got doing nothing. Now, as a kid, that got beat into me over and over and over. And as I've grown up, it's always been a part of me to always try to excel. I haven't always excelled, but for the most part, I've been doing pretty good um, in my young adult life here. And, you know, I've done a lot to kind of temper myself, discipline myself. Um, and not get too upset with the fact that I've got to work harder than everyone else. I got to be, try to be the smartest guy in the room. Not most intelligent, but the smartest. Because being smart is the application of intelligence. And with my opportunities, I don't take the same risk that everyone else does. Which kind of puts me in this weird bubble of... Uh, trying to be safe, not 
you know, make mistakes and not get hurt. Because I feel that if I make a mistake, I got to be able to come back from it or else it could be the end for me. Financially, uh, emotionally, spiritually, uh, even my own mortality. As you know, young black men, if you make it past 25, that's pretty good. And, and most, and to make it to an older age as a as a black man is a blessing in itself, because there are so many uh, things that go against our very existence that are uh, opposed to our existence. Um, and you know, I try to keep, I try not to keep that in mind so much. I just try to live as a person. But in America, it's hard to do so. But I endeavor to do so. So why am I talking to you guys about this right now? Well, I had a very sobering moment last week. Um, I was shown a situation where a person of my same melanated complexion was not allowed to have a second chance. I saw a person that looked just like me that either didn't care, didn't realize, or didn't count on the fact that their good work product was enough to garner them a second chance. You, we do things, we help out, we overextend ourselves, and we pray and hope that our works are enough to give us a second look, to give us some sort of wiggle room. But as black folks, we don't have that. This person that does a very good job in their sphere was let go for easily correctable behavior. We all make mistakes. We all get tired. We all zone out. We all check out sometimes. And it's something that could have been fixed easily. But instead of attempting to fix it, that the the powers that be chose to just go ahead and let this person go far be it from the fact they work overtime almost every day far be it from the fact that they help out the rest of uh, their cohorts every day far be it from the fact they've attempted to always be a team player and be a positive um, force in the area around the cohorts and the colleagues none of that mattered none of none of the positives shown time and time again mattered and to see a person that puts in all that time work dedication to self-development and the development of others was sobering it it brought me down seeing it right before my very eyes it brought me to childhood it brought me back years and in my mind in the back of my mind it poured out that we can't make mistakes And the mistakes we make, doesn't matter how big or how small, there, someone is waiting. Someone out there is waiting to get you caught up. They're hoping you mess up. They're hoping you slip up. 
And <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy when it's a stranger. And it's even crazier when it's someone that looks like you. And it's even crazier when you see someone that looks like you who has the power to correct the behavior, opt to rub, you know, wash their hands of it and, and let what happened happen. It's not that person's fault, of course. It's not that person's fault. You know, they're just doing their duty. But in the community that we're in, this hyper individualism, it's beneficial for the individual. But when we look at the collective, we see how disjointed we are as black folks in positions of power and helping others raise up and, and feed their families and be in better opportunities and situations where we can help each other out. It was cold. Now, this person, this positive person that made this one mistake, they can only be mad at themselves. They can't be mad at anyone else. And we're not gonna put blame on anyone else. But we are going to look at the fact that where something could have been done to avoid financial hardship for this positive person. The optics appear that no nothing was done. I, I just don't know. Seeing someone get got like that, seeing someone lose potentially lose their livelihood over a simple correctable mistake that any of us whether we had a bad day or not could have been accused of it shakes you it it brings up yeah you get PTSD of all those times when your parents were hard on you your guardians your grandparents, your, your your mentors, black folks, we have no choice but to be exceptional. We have no choice but to not make mistakes. And the only way you can get away, not get away, the only way you can be okay with making a mistake is when you're in an environment where you can make a mistake and it won't cost you everything. When black folks do something, we got to be careful. That's why I'm not very emotional. I'm very logical and reserved because I'm deep down. I'm very emotional, but I can't let that mess up my money. I can't let that mess up my opportunity. So I've I have to numb myself. And I know a lot of brothers and sisters out there that numb themselves too, so they can make sure that they retain what they have because what we have what we work so hard for it can be taken so quickly in an instant and then we gotta start all over again if the mistake wasn't bad enough to keep us from gaining an opportunity again there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that got into stupid shit they got too emotional ended up getting locked up and their prospects are now next to nothing they're losing the right to vote they lose so much by such little mistakes. They do things at the same rates as other uh, ethnicities of people, yet get incarcerated three times the level of others. They get um, got. Someone's always out there waiting for you to make a mistake. And I know the pressure at times gets to be a bit much. You know. That's why we have faith. That's why we, some people have faith. They have, they meditate. They take a moment. They take a breath. They try to look at these situations objectively and not let the emotionalism, not let the bullshit, the obstacles that life presents, or rather other people present in your life 
for you to overcome ultimately destroy you i don't know i had to get this one off my chest um i've been sad for a couple days um i know that person wouldn't want me to be sad they just want me to move on and uh do what i can to provide opportunity but this one just this really touched me and uh it reminded me that it can't be mediocre i gotta continue maybe to the day i die work three to four times harder than everyone else and I can't allow myself to make mistakes in front of people and if I do make a mistake pray to the Lord that it doesn't destroy me and my prospects to be successful in the future this current events don't forget to like comment subscribe real talk real people um, let me know in the comments have you guys ever felt like this have you ever thought that something that you did wasn't that big of a deal but it turned out to be a mountain out of a molehill have you ever lost an opportunity over something petty and small were you told you had to work three times as hard as a child to get just as much as your peer that didn't have to let us know sound off in the comments and remember always Keep it real.